While filming the Greenland segment with Professor Jason Box, we were actually sat on the Denmark Pavilion in the blue zone of the COP. This prompted us to record this little extra segment which uh, gives his view on how Denmark is doing as his adopted country in dealing with the policy decisions around tackling climate change in an equitable way. Jason, it's good to see you here at COP26 and we're sat on the rather glamorous Danish pavilion, I have to say. And Denmark has come to the COP with a set of policies which are ambitious, and that's the, one of the key words of the COP, is ambition. Uh, can you just tell us a little bit about the ambition of Denmark? There is actually really strong leadership coming out of Denmark in terms of climate policy. The, Denmark has announced just this year uh, 24 laws, policies geared to make a 70% carbon emission reduction by 2030. Denmark is focusing policy very strongly on carbon neutrality and this is thanks to political consensus that exists in the country. Uh, the, at the moment, uh, Danish politicians are kind of falling over each other to be more green. Uh, there is political consensus and so the some specifics are uh, the plan and investments are going in uh, for creating so-called energy islands, uh, one in the North Sea between Denmark and uh, UK, and that energy island would supply energy not only to Denmark but, but its neighbors. Uh, Denmark is involving the business community uh, and getting their feedback, uh, what is realistic. and. I, I was exposed to this Danish climate plan just a couple weeks before the COP and I was struck by how progressive and ambitious and, and hard focused on, on rules. So the business community can see uh, what are the rules. It, it, it's very helpful for business to understand the rule book yeah. that they're working with. And uh, it, it puts Denmark in a kind of a leadership position okay. uh, where their their um, progressive climate policy can be shown as a template to use around the world. Now the the devil's in the details. Go on then, tell us the devil. Um, well, one, one details. devil detail is that Denmark is among uh, a minority of countries that can actually finance the huge investments that are needed to make a green transition. Okay. Uh, so, while Denmark could serve as a template for the world, there's, I think, less than one third of global nations that could afford to implement such a policy. Um, other um, devils in the details are um, the strong uh, fossil energy inputs that are required to produce a lot of windmills and solar. Uh, so windmills and solar are kind of like uh, dirty energy parading as, as clean energy because it takes tremendous amount of fossil energy to uh, mine and produce and deliver and, and construct uh, energy islands. Uh, the, the response to that is that okay well it's a one-time a one-time uh, uh, dirty energy pulse. Okay. Uh, it, and, and a counterpoint is that, well, there's maintenance costs, so it'll never be carbon neutral. It'll always have some carbon impact. Uh, so it's, it, it represents Denmark attempting to make good on, on their Paris commitments. Okay, and if we, talk, we take these the, the, the devilish details as, as you've outlined them, I mean, one big thing with this COP is global climate justice. And if what, only one third of the um, nations of the world can afford your climate transition plan, and is it not incumbent upon Denmark to finance, to, to live up, because we've had a big commitment problem here where they're meant to be funding the developing nations um, to the tune of 100 billion a year, which is the legacy damage that we have, we have inflicted upon them. So, do you think there's more responsibility lies in that direction of actually committing these funds, and maybe more than we're actually offering, because it's peanuts what we're actually offering? 
I'm unaware of the Danish international contributions to pay for its its climate debt. I think as a, a former colonial uh, empire, uh, Denmark would have a, a rather large uh, climate reparations that one could say that it, it owes the world. I, I'm, I, I'm not familiar with... You did have the details of how much they've given them. Yeah. But uh, I think I know a little bit more about Norway, who I know spends billions annually in the form of aid packages to try to help uh, de the developing world. And having spoken with uh, people involved in the Norwegian efforts internationally to bring aid, it is extremely difficult to implement successfully the, these aid packages. Sure, sure. Uh, I think that has to do with corruption uh, in developing nations being a, a problem. Uh, Scandinavia, back to Denmark, this is a very trusting society. It's one of the things that makes it uh, possible for, for them to be credible in at the COP. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm I don't know at the, that level, the political level in Denmark, how they're uh, presumably pressure that they would be trying to put on uh, the, the big carbon emitters, U.S., uh, you know, Brazil, China, India. I, I don't know those conversations, but we might get some feedback from some of the people here in the Danish pavilion. Sure. And it, of course, I spoke to someone on, from the Bangladesh delegation who said having an engaged citizenship is one of the keys to confronting the climate issues and building resilience in your own country and, and, and transitioning to a, where you want to be in the future. So it sounds like Denmark is streets ahead of the UK and despite their claims. I think that's only possible because, again, there's so much trust yeah, in the exactly. Danish politics and that there's political consensus about the urgency of the climate crisis that at the moment uh, Danish politicians appear to be falling over each other to be more green. And I, 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 I remain concerned about how the Danish citizenry is entering a more consumer intensive economy and the, the Danish economy uh, still living beyond its, its planetary boundaries. If the world lived in the Danish uh, standard of living, uh, we still need far more than one planet Earth of resources. So that's one of the devils of the details. Um, but I think it's, it's mainly the energy policy from Denmark that hopefully can be replicated elsewhere in the world.